So here we can see more lymph nodes. We see the submental, which is underneath the chin. We see the submandibular lymph nodes, which is right underneath the mandible. This is the parotid or auricular, pre-auricular lymph nodes, which is in front of the ear. And then this is really important. This is your jugular vein. And there are many lymph nodes associated with or really close rather to the internal jugular vein. And we're going to look at that. But for now, just know that there are upper deep cervical nodes and there are lower deep cervical nodes. And what's important about lymph nodes is that we palpate them. And palpate basically means you're touching, you're feeling them. There is a video posted on Blackboard that I do encourage you guys to watch that shows how the palpation is done. So one of the things we do when we do a, uh, an exam on a client, we want to palpate all their nodes to make sure that it's not swollen or tender. So this one is just a table that outlines that your gum, okay, so your gums are over here, and where do they, the, where do the limp from the gums, where do they drain into, where is their checkpoint? And their checkpoint is in the, either in the submandibular, submental, or upper cervical lymph node. So your gums are all over here, and they kind of get the lymph or the fluid from the gingiva, from the gums. They kind of get drained either into the submandibular, they could also get drained and filtered into the submental, and even the upper cervical lymph nodes. The palate, so palate is the roof of your mouth, where do they get drained? They also go into the upper deep cervical nodes. Your teeth, so majority of your teeth, they get drained into the submandibular lymph nodes. So again, remember there are vessels, there are uh, channels, there are tubes that kind of, uh, that um, are all around the teeth and they kind of have to drain somewhere and so they drain the, into the closest area and in this case it's the submandibular. So this is just a table outlining that. The jugular digastric node, this is right behind um, or right near the, the angle of the mandible. So here's your mandible angle of the mandible is the corner of the mandible which is right here and this over here is your jugular digastric node so as we can um, appreciate that we, you know we have a lot of nodes within our head and neck area and what do nodes do they filter out all the bad stuff submental so submental is right underneath the chin and what's important about that is just you see those vessels those channels over here and only goes to the lower incisor teeth so all the lower incisor teeth the lymph the fluid gets drained over here and then it moves and then it moves along so it has to drain somewhere there are blood vessels here there are lymphatic vessels here and they gotta drain the lymph somewhere and so they drain into the submental nose so the lower incisors get drained over into here into the submental nodes submandibular lymph nodes so you can see if you look at it all the teeth besides the lower incisors get drained over here so when, um, all the maxillary teeth right all the max teeth and you can see the lymphatic vessels kind of going towards the ma max teeth so they all get filtered out here your sinus is around here the maxillary sinus so they also get drained over here your mandibular canines and mandibular posterior teeth they also get drained here so the incisors are the only one that gets drained into the submental nodes but all the other teeth get drained into the submandibular nodes and then there are other stuff as well, like floor of the mouth, tongue, cheek, hard palate, etc. The upper deep cervical nodes are the ones that are on top, superficial or upper deep. And again, what do they drain? It's all listed over here. So the third molar, the bottom of the tongue, right, the soft palate, so all the things that are posterior of the mouth, they kind of get drained over here. And then the lower deep, so this is like further down here, it's also known as the inferior deep. And they drain. So everything from here, from the upper deep cervical nodes goes here. And they drain um, some of the occipital nodes, kind of they go back down here. And then it goes into the internal jugular vein, okay? So all the fluid then gets into the internal jugular vein. So if you have cancer and your cancer is very close to the lower deep cervical node, that's pretty bad because it's going to hit the bloodstream really soon and then it's going to circulate all over the body. But if it's somewhere up there, we have a chance of catching that cancer and preventing that cancer from moving on moving deeper down into our bloodstream and circulating all over our body. So when the cancer hits 
the lower um, deep cervical nodes were kind of in trouble because now it's really close to the internal vein, the jugular vein is really close to the bloodstream and it will circulate over here and go all over the heart and all over the body. What's cool about the um, lymph nodes is that there are primary, secondary and tertiary nodes. And so to explain that in really um, simple terms, it's basically if you look at a lymph node, and let's say there's an infection here, this could be considered your primary node. If the primary node didn't catch that infection, then it'll go to the secondary node. If the secondary node didn't catch that infection, then it'll go to the tertiary node. So it's kind of like three different checkpoints that it will try to catch that infection before it goes um, all over the body, before the infection and cancer spreads through all the channels. So three checkpoints, the primary node, secondary node, and tertiary. So if the primary node didn't catch that infection, it's gonna go through a secondary node. If the secondary node didn't catch that infection or cancer, it'll go to the tertiary nodes. So basically, each group of nodes, there's like a barrier and it's trying to slow down the spread. That's why we have nodes and it's trying to slow down from it to go down and spread the cancer. So the more nodes it has to pass, the greater the opportunity to slow the spread of the cancer, right? Because once the um, infection or cancer reaches the lower deep cervical nodes, which is over here, now it's easy for them to go into the heart and then all over the body, right? So we kind of want these nodes to prevent and to stop the cancer or infection from growing, from spreading. The, here we have examples of the lymphatic system playing a role where they are causing um, a gum boil. So there's buccal swellings over here. And this is because the infection from the lymphatic system has kind of boosted over here and it causes a gum boil. This is the submental area, which is under the chin, right? Submental area is under the chin. And sometimes what can happen is if you have, if the lymph node caught an infection, you know, how as, as it's going through the filter, it catches an infection, it could swell up that area here. And a possible infection that could happen is Ludwig's angina. So Ludwig's angina is basically swelling in the submental region, in this, um, where the submental node is. It's in the swell, it's the swelling beneath the chin. Last point here is that if you have a maxillary infection, so if you have an infection on your top of your uh, mouth, it could spread, and if it spreads, it could go to the nose, the nasal cavity, it could go to your sinus, um, which again is rare. So nasal cavity is rare. If it spreads to the maxillary sinus, that is rare. Usually what happens is it goes like first below the eye. You'll see that it swells up there. And the soft tissue of the cheek, so just behind the cheek, there might be some swelling there. So maxillary infections, um, they cause swelling in these areas. All right, let me know if you have any questions. Thank you.